Okay, Timeline Week continues, and today we're going into the world of comedy with Vice Academy. I mean, when, when I said comedy, I didn't really mean, like, good comedy, uh, did I? Uh, that's right, this classic TNA series used to be a staple of late night TV, and I was shocked when I saw that there were so many of them. But do they have any continuity? Let's find out. We first entered the Academy back in 1989 with Vice Academy from Rick Sloan, director of Hobgoblins. We start with a drug deal and then Ginger Lynn Allen is here, legendary adult star, and this was shortly after she retired to do mainstream films, but before she went back into the industry. And she's revealed to be a cop, but I guess she's also in the police academy? And their teacher is Miss Devonshire here, but Trash is here too, and they study, which mostly consists of kicking Dwayne here in the balls, and, huh, wait, uh, this is a police academy, and th these are the students? Uh, like, coincidentally, in this universe, the police are all, like, 20-something women who look like they're going for a cheerleading squad and less like guys that look like, well, dudes that want to be cop that seem all to have a very particular look. Uh, my first thought was that it was like an all-female class, like like something specialized, but then there's Dwayne here, the only guy in the class. Um, I actually feel like I would rather live in this world. <laughs> they decide to make up Shawnee, and um, th this is what they come up with for a hot girl look, so this is definitely the 80s. And they trick Holly with this sign that she would obviously never would be able to know was there, and they passed the Vista Theater in Hollywood. The theater on Hollywood Boulevard that the complex premiered in. And Good Morning Vietnam is playing, and that came out in 87. But this was a second-run theater that didn't have brand new releases, but this is most likely in late 87 or 88 then. They're in a van with a license plate sticker that matches the colors for California in 87, so it looks like that's our year. And Dee Dee goes undercover with a porn company and meets Chucky, who says this. Um, what happened to the other actress? Uh, we had to get rid of her because she turned 19. I never thought she passed 18. After which, she falls for him. She falls for the dude that straight up just admitted to knowing that one of the girls that worked for the company was underage. Thankfully, the company keeps the book with records of everything illegal right on top of the desk, and she then ends up making the scene with Chucky, and they bust them. Shut up. I might be able to grant you full immunity. Yes help the guy who admitted to knowingly having sex with a girl we now to be 15 years old because you think he's howled. Since they're on the edge of not graduating, Dee Dee, Shawnee, and Dwayne have to try to take down a prostitution ring by themselves, and they start arresting women, and Dwayne walks in pretending to be a sheik, and is not really convincing, and has an accent that is not racist at all, and first walks up and says, I want to party and have lots of money, and then arrests them, which I'm pretty sure would be entrapment. But then when they quote him a price, he pulls his freaking gun on them. Like, like for what reason is that necessary? Like, maybe you need to stay in the police academy a little bit longer to learn when to draw your gun and when it would be appropriate, and that time is not when a prostitute quotes her price. And here's a little cameo. Uh, this is Darren Norris, who was in Hobgoblins as well, and has since gone on to become one of the biggest stars in voice acting. They get captured and come face to face with the criminal mastermind, Queen Bee, and after some shenanigans, round them all up in, in their van. Uh, with the help of the guy who bones 15-year-olds. They then graduate in the most low-budget commencement ceremony of all time, and oh, oh hey, this is, this is right down the road from me. The trio graduates, and Miss Devonshire's attempts to sabotage them fails, and everything ties up all nicely. 
One year later, a sequel happened with Vice Academy Part 2, which opens with Holly returning, but then Melissa Moore is here. You know, the girl from that most important scene from Repossessed. A young lady, would you pull down your dress? Sure. Dee Dee's also here, and look, it's Dwayne Whitaker, who was also in Hobgoblins, and they screw up an important mission. And Miss Devonshire is back, who says this is their first assignment, so it's very shortly after the last film, and they get in trouble with the commissioner, and get paired up with Jeannie, who runs the front desk, and she's played by Joe Steele, who was also in the first one, but as a prostitute and a totally different character. There's a new villain around named Spanish Fly that of course spikes people's drinks, so they send Dee Dee and Holly undercover to bust up her gang. And this car has a plate sticker that matches the color for 90. But that seems too long a time jump for them to say that they've just graduated, so that's likely not in play here. Petrolino gets a phone call from a girl named Shawnee, possibly the one from the first movie. Um, they then unveil, um, B bimbo cop like like why make it a bimbo I, I guess because it's in vice and they wanted it to go undercover as a prostitute or whatever but then maybe don't have it be built like a truck oh and this was tegan clive the the actress playing bimbo cops last movie you may know her as the alienator though the girls get captured and forced to drink pure Spanish fly, and then Bimbo Cop arrives, but malfunctions. So Dee Dee fixes her, and they break loose by literally gently pulling on the ropes. They then save the day, but when they want to give all the credit to Bimbo Cop, Holly sabotages it. Mainly because it has a dial on his back that literally says overload, which yet yeah, does not seem like a smart idea. She explodes, but they know it was Holly, and she's put in jail. Without a concrete date, I'm, I'm giving it a year later than the original since it was supposed to be not long after the graduation, so 88. Another year passed, and in 1991, the series continued with Vice Academy 3, and the commissioner is back with Devonshire, although she's been recast, and Dee Dee is gone, so in steps her little sister, Candy, and Holly is in prison still, but it sounds like, she, like she's just gone there, and she's supposed to be undercover to watch another prisoner like it like it looks like she's just arriving so i think that this is different than the prison from the ending of the last film there's a jailbreak led by julia parton yep dolly's cousin and the hobgoblins security guard is here and the evil melanie gets caught up in a chemical spray which turns her hair green and makes her insane and candy and holly basically just instantly hate each other and Malatheon commences a crime spree around the city, using the prison breakout girls, who for some reason stay in their prison clothes. One of the ex-prisoners is recruited into the Vice team, and they all get into trouble in a bar brawl, and the commission is reading Shooting Times magazine, which is, yes, a real magazine that actually still exists. And this one is from March 1991. So this is 91, three years after the last film. Holly blames Samantha for something that she didn't do, getting her sent back to prison, and they set up a trap for Malatheon at a recycling event, and she takes the bait, with Devonshire suiting up to help catch the greenie, and Samantha breaks out of prison to help out. They send the girls back to jail, and Samantha passes the exam to join the Vice Squad. The series took a break and it wasn't until 1995 until the next entry with Vice Academy 4. And did, did I mention that all of the films have the same opening theme song? Candy is back, as is Miss Devonshire, and she's been unrecast with Jane Hamill coming back to the role, and Malathion is back too, still in jail. She escapes, and actor Steve Mateo is here, and he had a small role in the last one as a professor, and I think he's a different character here, because he's now a mechanic named Anvil, and Holly's gone, but Candy has a partner named Samantha, although I think it's possibly supposed to be a new character and not Samantha from the last film. 
Malathion attacks Devonshire, and her and the commissioner decide to get married, so they have a shower that Greeny crashes, and she keeps on trying to interfere with the planning, while Samantha starts dating the new vice recruit, Erwin, who's a bit nerdy because, you know, if you want to indicate someone is a nerd, you just make them wear suspenders and a bow tie. Here's the part where the girl goes up to the attic. Now watch, she's gonna let the bats out. Ah! Would you be quiet? Hey! I paid for my ticket, I can do whatever I want here. And now I hate him. He's the commissioner's son, and when the day of the ceremony comes, they have to bring a bunch of the prisoners, and Erwin brings friends from a sci-fi convention, and Candy and Samantha show up late in their underwear, so you know, the typical wedding. Um, and Malathion then shows up with an Uzi, and a fight breaks out, but wraps up with Anvil proposing to Malathion, which I guess cures her evil, so they do a double ceremony? But nope, still with the Uzi, and Candy saves the day, and the commish and Miss D are wed. There's no set date here, so real time works, and this is 95, four years after the last one. They were back in full swing, and Vice Academy 5 came one year later with 1996, and Candy is back again with yet another new partner in Tracy here. And she's Holly's younger sister. And Holly has been in prison for five years now. And since she was out of jail in her last appearance, and that was 91, she probably went back in like right afterwards, making this 96. Erwin is back too, and so is the character of Petrolino, but he's now played by a different actor. And somehow, Erwin's virtual reality hooker gets transported into the real world, and she immediately starts causing trouble. And there's a pimp named Bojangles, and it's the same guy that's been in all of the movies so far, but in a different role in each one. When the local councilwoman loses her election, she blames the vice squad for it, and the commissioner and Devonshire seek some counseling for their, some marriage woes, and a series of fairly unconnected shenanigans ensue, with them trying to trap Heidi Ho. But meanwhile, she's just with Irwin the entire time. Uh, she ends up teaming up with the city's other hookers that seem to consist of just these two women here. And you know, why does it seem like the vice squad is the only police in this entire town. We never see any other cops anywhere. They get some new partners. Hey, say, Gilbert, isn't it a rare phenomenon for a computer-generated character to, to break out into the real world? Well, you'd think so, but it's happened in six or seven other movies so far. So now, now we're getting meta, I guess. They end up kidnapping Devonshire, but the computer experts are able to reprogram Heidi to stop the prostitutes. So yeah, the AI that organized everything and then convinced the prostitutes to team up with her and carry out this whole kidnapping plan and had to beat them up to get them to do it, now just helps arrest them and brings them in. They send Heidi back into the program. Don't you care at all about the, the future of the Vice Academy? Yes, I'd like to see it go on forever. Um, I would not. The final entry came two years later in 1998 with Vice Academy 6, which starts off right away with our core cast of The Commissioner, Miss Devonshire, Candy, and I guess Tracy is now a recurring character. As they're taking all the funds for the Academy to the bank, and Steve Mateo is here, and he's another new character now, and the bank is robbed by three women with their leader dressed as Marilyn Monroe, and that Hobgoblin security guard is here again, and then it's weird because you have this guy, Brad Blumenthal, who was in part five and played a character with the same name, but in that one he was a geeky computer tech, but now he's a high-ranking agent and a hard ass. So I'm not sure if he's supposed to be the same guy here. Uh, this dude is back again, but now he's a strip club owner. So he's now been in all six and has been six different characters. The news starts reporting on the incompetence of the Vice Squad and um, now, <laughs> just now. Um, and then Miss Devonshire says that her and the commissioner haven't consummated their marriage yet and that it's their one year anniversary. So this is one year after the ending of part four. So this is also in 1996. So it's set pretty soon after the ending of part five then. Tracy then asks how long the candy has been on the force, and she's told six years, and she appeared in part three, which took place in 91. 
So this is 97, but if Devonshire's wedding was one year ago, that puts part four in 96, and then part five stays in 96 and just happened just like a short while after. Candy ends up getting framed and sent to prison, and, and I love that the prisoners are just held in by a single chain link fence, and there's a neighborhood right there. The prison bus crashes, and Candy escapes to clear her name and ends up on the lam, but ends up catching two of the robbers. It's then their anniversary, and there's something called the Prison Channel, and they're showing a story on Holly, and I guess she ended up in jail because she killed the guy, um, and they say a bad audit which I guess is a poke at Ginger Lynn going to jail for four months because of tax evasion in real life. But it's a movie, so I guess she's not in jail anymore and is now an actress. T shows up with a bomb and they get it away from her and Mrs. Devonshire has to deactivate it, which she does pretty easily. Everything wraps up nice for everyone and they make a joke about how they've been married for a year, but it feels like 10. And I think that's a meta reference, although they only got married in part four, which was three years earlier. Uh, the characters didn't even meet until the second film in 1990. And if they're referring to the series in general, well, that debuted in 1989, so it's like nine years. Um, anyway, that was it for the franchise though, and the series ended there. So there you have it, uh, six movies with, uh, with I guess more of a continuity than you would expect for like very low budget comedy flicks. Um, this was very obviously like some sort of ripoff of the Police Academy movies, um, but not as funny uh, and not as good. Um, but, but they are entertaining. I mean, I certainly wasn't mad at all these. I will say that watching all of them in a row, it started to get a little tiresome, like about four movies in. But yeah, for the most part, they're fairly entertaining. You, uh, you won't be mad at them. Uh, you probably remember seeing these on USA Up All Night back in the day if you used to watch that show. They were on all the time. Um, and if, So if you've seen these and you enjoyed them, tell me down below. If you've just never heard of them or if you had no clue that there were six of them, tell me that down below in the comments. I want to hear that too. Leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the channel. Hit the bell if you want notified when the new videos come out. And think about going to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash movie timelines. I'd appreciate that. These guys do, and I thank them for it. And I thank you guys for just watching the videos. And I'll see you tomorrow as Timeline Week continues. Thanks, guys.